Hello and welcome my friends and viewers to this week's episode of Legend Lore, a video series where I draw monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we go over their history within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and I give advice and suggestions on how you can utilize them in your own games. This week we will be covering Rahadin, the lieutenant and chamberlain of the vampire Strahd von Zarevich, in the D&D 5th edition adventure module, The Curse of Strahd. After being exiled for refusing to bow down to a dusk elf prince that he saw as weak, Rahadin would assist King Barov, a warlord and the father of Strahd, in conquering them when the dusk elves refused to pledge fealty. Barov then made Rahadin an honorary member of his family, and he served them well beyond the king's death, eventually becoming the loyal general, friend, and confidant of Strahd himself. Rahadin's assailing of the dusk elves would continue when, sometime after Strahd's turning, a dusk elf named Petrina Velikovna attempted to marry him. Out of disdain for their vampire ruler and his dark deeds, she was killed by her own people, and Strahd sent Rahadin to punish them in a way fitting their transgression. Rahadin ended up slaying all of the females, leaving the males to be unable to breed and bear witness to the slow decline of their race. Since then, Rahadin has served in Barovia and Ravenloft as Strahd's most loyal agent. Now, first off, I was actually very surprised to discover through my research that Rahadin only appears in the 5th edition of D&D despite other characters like Von Richten and Esmeralda appearing in previous pieces of Ravenloft media. I guess that's on me for assuming, but it was still a very big surprise, especially considering his importance in the module and to Strahd. In terms of how I like to portray Rahadin, I have a couple of different approaches depending on my party. On one hand, I have him as the immensely loyal Chamberlain of Strahd who has known him since he was a kid, possibly being in King Barov's service before Strahd was even born. King Barov took him in when he had nowhere else to go, and so he betrayed and damned the rest of his race to utter extinction transferring that loyalty to Strahd after his father's death. As such, Rahadin has bared witness to a great many things in Strahd's life, including his growth, his fall, and the effect that his negligent mother, warlord father, and the romance of Sergei and Tatiana had on him. Realistically, Rahadin was probably the one who taught Strahd how to wield a sword and use magic in the first place. And so, whenever it comes down to running Curse of Strahd, the Dungeon Master's first decision when playing Rahadin should be to decide whether or not he deems Strahd's Curse of Vampirism a bad thing or a good thing. In one instance, which is referred into the module, Rahadin would probably seek a way to cure his master of his affliction, and this could take the form of him leaving offerings in the Amber Temple like he does in the module with swallowing a frog, to him attempting to kidnap and manipulate Arena and the other players to coming to Castle Ravenloft. It could even go to the point that he aligns with the players who wish to redeem or help Strahd break free of his curse, which in my opinion is the more interesting angle. But if this is not the case and the players are keen to destroy Strahd, I have Rahadin staunchly defend his master and use all powers at his disposal to achieve that goal. I see him as not just a master fighter, but a very cunning ranger and stalker who is capable of discovering the weaknesses and strengths of the players, exploiting both to his advantage, possibly even sending some undead in the night to test them and bear witness to any of the secret techniques or abilities they may be hiding. If the party manages to kill Strahd before Rahadin, I can even see him going as far as to make a deal with one of the elder evil vestiges of the Amber Temple serving as a sort of campaign final boss standing in the way of the players before they could finally leave Barovia. With his master dead, he would be willing to fight to the death himself and take the players with him if he can. In relation to the previous point regarding the character Petrina Velikovna, she had approached Strahd once when he was human, and again when he turned into a vampire, viewed with suspicion both times by Rahadin. While the Dusk Elves themselves were the ones to do away with her, Rahadin was always keen to steer his master clear of her while he was human, and cultivate her into a suitable thrall once he had become undead. As such, Petrina's ghost haunts Barovia, particularly her Dusk Elf brother, Kazmir Velikov, who is the leader of one of the last remaining tribes of Dusk Elves, who have been taken in by the Vistani. Her death, and the subsequent death of all of his people's women, has left Kazmir with an immense sense of guilt, which Petrina uses to manipulate him into attempting to rid herself of Rahadin, leaving her an opening to seduce Strahd once and for all. Now, how she intends to do this as a ghost, I personally have no idea, but I do suppose that she can make use of the ghost's possession ability, perhaps possessing one of the player characters or even Arena herself. Rahadin would also be particularly wary of Babila Saga, having witnessed her obsessive behavior and zealous belief that she is Strahd's mother since his birth. He was probably the one who physically removed her from the premises when she was banished by the family. Lastly, and one of my favorite avenues when it comes to playing Rahadin, I like to have Strahd sometimes be portrayed in a little bit more of a sympathetic light, having been manipulated into his damning acts by the machinations of Vampyr, the dark vestige that he eventually makes the deal with to become a vampire. Naturally, one would believe that Rahadin would have attempted to save his master from damnation, and so what I do is I have Vampyr dispose of Rahadin in some way, either by killing him or keeping him prisoner within the Amber Temple. 
He then takes Rahadan's form and returns to Ravenloft, manipulating the household and all of Barovia to keep Strahd either bound to his curse, or to try and figure out a way to break it so he may finally escape into the world beyond. This way, Rahadan can become the object of rescue from the Amber Temple by the players, or the players can discover his bones somewhere in Barovia and eventually learn that this is the true Rahadan, either by using Speak with Dead or by some other means. Either way, he becomes the true endgame villain. The players possibly defeating him once, only to witness him rise up again in a newly revealed, malicious form of vampire. In regards to combat, I run Rahadan ultimately as a skirmisher who cuts down foes really quickly and never stays in one place, aided by both his deathly choir ability, as well as another homebrew ability that I use called Call of the Dead. This allows him to give up the passive use of his choir ability to conjure a number of undead equal to the number of party members he is fighting these undead being the ghosts of the slain dusk elves that he has since enthralled to aid him from the afterlife. In regards to classing him out, sometimes I like to use him as a fighter, a rogue, a ranger, and even a multi-class of all the three, but I've also given thought to running him as a Oath of Crown paladin, swearing a blood oath to Barov and to Strahd to serve them eternally until his death. Possibly even beyond. But regardless of which class I choose, I always outfit him with feats like Sentinel, Mobile, Defensive Duelist, and so on. Anything to make sure that he can get in and get out without much trouble. I also like to make sure that he can never get caught or surrounded by the party using spells such as Misty Step, Far Step, and maybe even giving him some magic items like cloaks and boots of elven kind. You can even have him open up combat with a deathly shot from range with a bow, allowing him to get some more off while the party closes the distance between the two of them, forcing him to change to his dual short swords. Speaking of his swords, we have a magic item for you this video, specifically two, and these are going to be Rahadin's twin scimitars. The two swords are Covenant, the honored sword gifted to him by King Barov upon pledging his loyalty, and Nightfall, the ancestral sword of the Dusk Elves that he took upon aiding Barov in conquering his people. I've included both item stat blocks in the description below, but let's go over them anyway. Covenant is a simple item, a plus one scimitar that does not require attunement, but allows the wielder to cast the spell Compel Duel once per short rest, the DC being 17. Nightfall, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. It is a plus two scimitar that does require attunement, and deals an additional 1d4 cold damage on a successful hit. At nighttime, the wielder can use the item to cast the spells Armor of Agathis at third level and Invisibility once per day. Lastly, if the wielder is an elf, half elf, a ladron, or bears any form of elven blood, the sword becomes empowered by sensing and attaching to the elven lineage. Its attack and damage bonus increases to plus 3 from a plus 2, the additional damage increases to 1d6 from 1d4, and the Armor of Agathis spell can now be cast at 5th level, and the invisibility now becomes greater invisibility. You could have these items be what Rahadan drops when defeated, the object of a particularly ballsy thief, or something that Casimir wishes to collect in order to have a chance of being able to fight Rahadan. You could even have Nightfall simply be residing deep within the woods in the ruins of a Dusk Elf settlement somewhere, your elven players feeling its call and having to go out of their way to collect it. And so that ends the video on Rahadan. I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and if you guys want to keep updated on the next Legend Lore, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon on the corner to be notified. And if you guys want to support the channel, please follow me on social media, as well as check out some of the homebrew content that I've made listed below. If you guys want to have a chance to vote on the next subject of Legend Lore, please check out my Twitter and my TikTok. I always put polls on there as often as I can. And the votes you guys put in will tell me which monster, character, or god I should do next. And as usual, please comment down below how you guys have used or encountered Rahadan in your games, and let me know what other D&D characters you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.